NFL draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars traded down twice and secured the 27th pick, securing Anton Harrison, the offensive tackle from Oklahoma. We've got our Locked On Jags host, Tony Wiggins, with us. I am Jordan Black, but first, Locked On's NFL draft coverage is presented by Ultimate Football GM. If you think you can run an NFL franchise, visit ultimate-gm.com to play the Ultimate NFL GM simulation game and start your dynasty today. Okay, Tony, walk us through this pick. A lot of changes in the offseason on the O-line. Did that play into this pick for the Jaguars, do you think? According to GM Trent Baalke, he was sort of asked that question, but mainly he was asked about Cam Robinson's impending uh, suspension that they're appealing. Uh, He said everything played a factor, all of it. And and I like that answer because normally you get coach speaking, no, we took the best player available or – no, we didn't think about that, but you had to because the bottom line is the crown jewel of this franchise is the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, and you got to keep him upright. Just because he's mobile doesn't mean you have to make him use a getaway car every time he drops back, you know. So um, I, I think it was a combination of the talent. They liked him. It could possibly have been a choice even if they had those two guys available because you can never get enough guys on the on, on the front line they uh, had hinted earlier that walker little could play guard so if walker little was going to play guard harrison might have been the pick because they are probably going to move on from cam robinson in 2024 i doubt if that would have been the situation but you never know how they really feel about walker little because they keep saying that he's this everyone thinks he can play left he can play right he can play guard but he just hasn't been on the field enough to really show that he can do all of those things. And usually when you have an offensive lineman that's that good, you can't keep him off the field, you stick him anywhere. And that's not what they have done. So I like the pick. I didn't like the predicament they got into because they're uh, right now they're a draft and develop and retain team from this point moving forward. And I thought letting a 25-year-old who had never missed a start get away, I thought it was a mistake. And I thought uh, extending Cam Robinson a year ago was a mistake. So – uh, he'll actually be playing the second year of an extension, but he'll be suspended. And uh, I think this is his last year. So they got a head start on getting some beef up front to protect Trevor Lawrence. So getting that beef up front, Anton Harrison, what do you make of him? Can he kind of serve as a bodyguard, if you will, for Trevor Lawrence, the crown jewel, as he said, of this franchise? I think he's automatically right away the most athletic lineman they have on the team. Uh, they're going to start him at tackle. In my opinion, he's going to start at left tackle. Uh, All but one of his starts in college at Oklahoma where he had a large body of work, they were all at left tackle. I think they give Walker a little a shot at right tackle. The the quandary you get into is what happens when Cam Robinson comes back. Cam Robinson has never played anything except left tackle, so I don't know how long his extension is. Mm -hmm. But with the Jaguars having a schedule that's really, really tough, last year they got off to a slow start. That's fine. They were two and seven and they won seven out of eight and won the division at nine and eight. That's not going to happen next year. You can't get off to a slow start when you play the Bengals, when you play the chiefs, when you play Buffalo, you play Baltimore, you play the 49ers. This is not a last place schedule. It's a winning, a division winning schedule. Therefore they need to get off to a very fast start and losing cam early would have really, really crippled them if they, if they did not have a replacement and they went and got him tonight. It's also a, a franchise on the rise, an ascending franchise. What does this franchise have to do in this draft and have they done it with this pick to continue to move in that direction? Well, this one was one that I'm a little bit perplexed about because I've always been a guy, if anybody's listened to the Locked on Jaguars podcast as an everyday, the one thing this team did in the past a lot was they would get their foundation, almost like building a house. They get their foundation, right? And then they start elevating, and then they realize the foundation stunk. So they would break it down and start over again. And you never really got a house. You never had anything built. So I thought this year they had a chance to actually start elevating and build more. But then they let him go. And now this seems like a replacement for a guy that the Chiefs gave 80, the Chiefs gave 80 million bucks. But when you take the emotional part out of it and you just look at it uh, for face value, the, the Jawan Taylor thing happened before they knew about the Cam Robinson situation and then the Cam Robinson situation. So they're faced with what do they do today? Today, I believe they got their man. They had been focused on 137 players for this draft that they wanted to pick their players from. And they were focused on three in particular. And they said that they felt real confident that one of the three would fall to them at 24. 
I personally believe that all three of them fell to him, which is why they moved back twice. And Trent said that it was a little bit too risky to take another move back because they're sitting right there in front of the Bengals who've had offensive line problems. They're sitting right there in front of the Chiefs that even though they're going to play Juwan Taylor at, at left tackle, they don't have a right tackle. So you had to make sure that you didn't allow those teams at the back to beat you to the punch and take the guy you really want. I think coming into the night, Anton Harrison was their man and they got him. Now, what are some other positional needs um, with uh, 11 more picks? What do you what do you do with the rest of those? Well, they said they're going to take best, best player available. I think that's slanted. I think it's best player available with an angle towards what they're actually going to need in order to fill their roster out properly. They need edge rush help. And even though they have three first round picks at edge, that's the biggest weakness that Doug Peterson talked about. I believe it was at the combine or, or right before the combine. He, he said that they need to improve their pass rush. Now, that doesn't just mean going out and picking everybody. It means the guys that they have on the roster have to improve. Josh Allen has to play well in, a, uh, in his fifth-year option year. Trayvon Walker has to continue to get better. They hope that Caleb Von Chason shows something in a contract year. But then I think they're also going to pick someone up. And if they don't, there's been rumors that Yannick Ngakwe has interest in coming back. If they decide to do that, that'll also help them because he is a pass rusher. That is, he woke up, I think he came out of the womb and he sacked the doctor in the delivery room because that's just what he does, right? So I think they're going to look at that. They need another slot corner. They may need to go a little bit more in tight end. And I wouldn't be surprised if they touch the offensive line again if the opportunity presents itself because they need more depth. They've lost two people and added one. Two minus one is one. So they're one in the hole and they need to get another one. Got a math lesson, some football all in one. That's what you get from listening to Tony Wiggins Locked on Jaguars. For more on the Jags, be sure to tune in to the Locked on Jags podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Tony, appreciate it.